Uh, hello everybody, uh, back with another project here. Now this is uh, something I've been trying to get back to for a while now. I'm, what I'm going to do is be building, I like to take time-lapse uh, photography with my camera. I use a Nikon D300 um, and uh, basically what you do is you take a series of still frames and then I can import them through QuickTime Pro and create a time-lapse video out of them. Um, however, when you just mount it on a tripod and uh, leave it pointed in one direction, it makes for, even with, you know, nice clouds and sunlight and everything moving, um, it tends to make for a fairly boring video. So, uh, one of the things I've been wanting to do is be able to control, uh, you put a motion track, a motion control system on the camera while it's shooting the the still frames for the time lapse. What that's going to require is some kind of uh, track to put the camera on and motors uh, to pull them and then some kind of an interface to program the speed and everything else and actually trigger the camera to take the frames. So I've been screwing around here uh, with what we have here is uh, the big easy uh, driver, uh, stepper motor driver. There's one here hooked up to an Arduino Uno. And here's another one hooked up to an Arduino Uno. Oops, the heat sink moved on that. Let me just... I'll have to get some... I'll have to redo that. Anyway, um... So I've been kind of messing around with this, and I've had I have uh, several different motors that I've gotten from a uh, local uh, electronics parts shop, and I've been trying to figure out how to use this thing. These are both both of these are running exactly the same program. Uh, this motor here has a seven point five degree step. So every full step is 7.5 degrees. And again, these are running exactly the same program. You can see how fast that's turning around. I put a piece of tape on there. This one has a 0.9 degree step. I think it's 0.9. It might be 0.09. I think it's 0.9. And you can see that's much slower than the other one. I'll see if I can get them both in frame. Now they both run uh, off of 12 volts, and luckily I have enough of these wall warts laying around from old, you know, printers and everything else that I was able to connect everything up. Uh, we'll just run through this real quick. The, you, I think the minimum number of connections to get a motor to drive into the forward direction, which is actually counterclockwise, uh, for a big easy driver is seven different wires. Now I've hooked up more than that here so I can play with uh, what they call the micro-stepping modes um, and the direction control so I can run them forwards and backwards. And I've also on, now the Big Easy boards don't come with these screw terminals installed and they don't come with enough to populate both sides of the board. Uh, I think they come, in, if I remember correctly, when I first got these, they come with just enough of the screw terminals to populate the minimum number of connections. So I think like four of these or whatever. But you really need, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total of these uh, screw connectors to fill all of the pinholes if you're going to connect your wires this way. Otherwise, you can just solder them directly to the big easy boards. Um, we'll go over this uh, in more detail later, but I wanted to show a couple of different things here. This is a six-wire motor, uh, and this is a four-wire bipolar motor. Now, the Big Easy drivers are specifically designed to run bipolar motors. So on a four-wire motor, uh, it's dead simple because there are only four-wire motor connections. And I won't show you this right now, but um, so here's the four wires coming out of that four-wire motor. There, So there are two coils inside of that motor, two wires to one coil, two wires to the other coil. 
on the Big Easy driver board, there are two holes labeled A and two, label, two holes labeled B. And you'd see that if I could turn the board over, but right now there's voltage going in there and I don't want to mess with it. Uh, one coil goes into A and one coil goes into B. Now, this third set of wires over here, this is to power... goes to one of the wall words that I've got down here. And that's actually powering the motor. Um, because you need a higher voltage than what comes out of the Arduino in order to power the motor. Uh, everything that's coming off of this side is simply for controlling the big easy driver board through the Arduino. Now over here, this is not a four wire, but this is a six wire motor. And you can see here there are six different wires, but you can also see that I am only using four of those wires. So there are two different, I, and forgive me if this is wrong, but this is the way I understand it and it seems to be working. There are two different coils in this six wire motor. The same as the two different coils in the four wire motor. The difference over here is that each one of the coils has a center wire and the two center wires are the ones that I am not using. Now in my case, the three wires on the left and the three wires on the right each go to a different coil in the motor. To determine which were the two outside wires, which are the equivalent of the two wires for each coil on the four-wire four motor, um, you put a, a voltmeter on each wire, and the resistance between the center wire, which you're not going to use on either coil, and either of the outer wires on that coil will be, and this may be backwards, half of the resistance between the two hour outer wires. So in this case, let's take the left hand side of this. If I, if I had a voltmeter attached to this one, to the first and the third wires, I might get an 80 on my voltmeter for the ohms resistance. If I put the volt if I put the the connectors from the voltmeter on the first and the second wire, I would have forty. And and so that's how you can tell which one's the center wire and so which one you don't need to hook up on a six wire motor in order to get it to work with the big easy driver. Again there it is turning around and this is you know again this is much slower and much smoother because this has a a point nine degree uh, full step, whereas this has a 7.5. Now, I'll show you the other little bit of the project that I do have running at this point. This is a track that I've built just out of wood and some uh, uh, 90 degree angle aluminum tracks here um, that I've I've drilled and screwed flush onto the top and basically it's you know it's just your simple canyon looking thing there now I've screwed spots for two motors these one down on this end and one down on this end this entire contraption's uh, six feet long the distance between the two motors uh, is exactly five feet and each motor has uh, a gear or a spindle on it and I've gotten a 10 foot length um, I think it's Teflon, I can't remember now uh, belt that connects you can see the teeth there hopefully that connects onto those uh, connects onto those sprockets. That will give me the ability to move forward and backward uh, when I'm controlling these two motors. So again, there's one on this end, one on that end, and then a belt running all the way down on the inside of the track. <clears throat> this will likely not end up being how this is going to be, but the other thing I've done here is built uh, a little 
basically a mount for the camera and you can see it has these rollers and I put these uh, I've, I've purchased the uh, this I can't remember what this is called just some kind of bar stock um, and these plastic holders here and then uh, put on these little rollers this fits directly inside of this track and will roll back and forth. It has some resistance because this is nice and tight. Then I have this which I got at Lowe's which is just uh, I can't remember if it's, I think it's quarter inch, just a big quarter inch rod and and it's hard to see in here but this is a vertical bearing which fits on there and once I sanded the rod down this fits very nice so what's going to happen is this is going to be attached to the trolley and there'll be some stands inside of here to hold this rod up and that will keep at any angle that will keep the trolley from just popping off and dumping my camera because you don't want to just I don't want to just be able to set you know set this thing on a flat surface. I want to be able to set it at an angle or do whatever um, I think I have another Let me see if I have another vertical bearing here. Give me one second I know I have it. I just don't know what I did with it Well, I'll find that late. Oh, here it, is. here it is. So here is a bigger size. This is a half inch vertical bearing. And basically what it is is just a tube. And I, you probably can't see it. But in here, on the bottom, are, are tiny little ball bearings. And that allows this to slide this direction on a rod. It's a very cool little device. I'll put uh, a URL up and everything uh, with that information on where I got that and where I got uh, the sprockets and the uh, and the toothed band. A uh, great site. Some of their stuff's pretty expensive, but if you ever need it, you can find just about anything you need there for this kind of a project. Uh, I will put that up with the video post. And let's see. And one other thing is that, you know, here's the camera that's going to be mounted on there. So another part of this project is going to be able to hook up to that port and actually trigger the camera to take uh, photos while it's moving on the track. So uh, this is the start of this project, um, and we will see you guys later.